All right. Good morning, Tika. Welcome to your Saturday morning class. Um, it is looking like a beautiful day here in Kansas. We've been actually awesome weather. It's so good to see people outside and letting go of the fear and letting go and returning back to themselves. And it's just been such a really cool week to watch. Um, a lot of things are opening up, all those good news. Is I just heard from my beautiful friendly in uh, Spain that they are allowed to take the kids outside as of tomorrow. Amazing. You know, it's so different all over the world where and how the lockdown is and the quarantine is. And it's interesting because if you kind of follow the footprints, it's where where ancient political BS is being um, cleared and removed. Um, so not going into conspiracy theory today, but notice where things are a little bit more tight as far as security is a lot of old paradigm belief systems that will eventually, once the ripple effect everywhere else moves, you'll notice a lot of um, a lot of things going back online. Now, they will go back online differently, differently because why we're quantum beings, we are different. You know, I just wanted you to take a minute and think about your last two months. Your last two months, you know, thinking about the beginning of March, um, we're almost in the beginning of May. Um, you know, we have we have completed a very big energetic cycle. We are on the the upturn of that. Basically, what's happening is you have gone through a metamorphosis, regardless if you've been conscious of it or not. Um, these things are designed. The ascension is designed for your brain and your ego identity to see. Um, the logical next step versus a whole transformation. You know, if the ego actually got to see what was really happening behind closed doors on your vibration, it would freak out because you are literally becoming a different you. You are becoming a, di a different you, a new you, of the version of you that is closer to your higher self, moving from carbon to crystal. This isn't an easy feat. Now, it's all frequency and vibration. So if you're not at the vibration of a reset or relaxation or surrender, like I've been telling you guys for weeks and weeks, if not months and not, not years, that this is your frequency you needed to be in to allow the upgrades, allow the downloads, allow the intuition to turn back on, allow your bodies to heal. Then we had to manufacture a manifestation where we all became afraid of a virus for 30 seconds and then realized that it was a very important upgrade and update. And the metaphor of the virus was of the mind. That's why it's called Corona, right? So it's all good. It's all good. So now who are you today? I want you to reflect for just a minute, take a breath, bring spirit into the body and ask yourself, you know, what are the differences within me over the last two months? Am I more relaxed? Am I less judgmental? Am I just more open to receive? Have I let go of a lot of stress? Have I let go of a lot of obligation? Have I surrendered to the now moment? Have I returned to play? Have I been laughing more? Have I been sweating the small stuff less? Have I been more appreciative of my freedom that I do have. Um, you know, what have you actually been doing? Because what you've been doing with these last two months is going to set the path and tone for where you're going. Now, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to like be, you know, in the best shape of your life, eating completely organic and, you know, judging no one. But it's just a really good reference point. You know, we never take score. But we do take stock and the stock is who am I now? Who am I in this moment? Who am I realizing my, as myself? You know, what are my what are my personality techniques and my personality signatures of this now moment? Which means how are you behaving? You want to know what's in your subconscious mind? Watch your behavior. OK, that's why discipline is so important in my teacher training class and, you know, our morning routines and our. Um, you know, all the things that we're doing that are super important because it sets the tone of your vibration throughout the day. Now, I know that your days, we have kind of lost Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and in the 
lockdown, it felt more like yesterday, today, and tomorrow, which is better because we're returning to the childlike state within ourselves. Hi, Joanna. I see you. Um, and as we return to that childlike state within us, the child is the one who walks the bridge. The child is the one who can go all the way into the darkness, into the light. Ego cannot go into the light and higher self cannot go into the dark. We need a mediator. We need that magical being that represents non-physical reality and physical reality within you. And that is the inner child. The inner child can go all the way down and the depths of hell and all the way into heaven and and play, which means have judgment of none of it. Ooh, the dark, I can do this and this and this. In the light, I can do this and this and this. And in the shadow, I can do this and this and this. In the shadow, I can make art and I can make music and I can make stories and I can tell, you know, I can I can talk about both sides. So the inner child within you is resurrecting. And that's what this Easter signature was about, the resurrection of the human spirit, which means that for a really long time, we've been playing in these higher cosmos and especially in this group because you know we're spiritual right and we've been playing in our meditations and we've been playing in our journeys and we've been playing in our healing modalities and we've been playing in our our um you know with all of our our higher cosmic energies but you came to be here you came to be this you came to know who you are and act it out and be it and commune and connect and love and experience and taste and touch. And when we are literally only living in the cosmic energies, we don't have this sense of ourself. We don't have this sense of touch and taste and feel that we really could because it's it's all integrated with pain. You know, those early childhood traumas that popped you out of your body and you didn't ever want to go back is now creating kind of a, or was creating a very self-abusive cycle because when there is no host from a higher level, ego is here to do its best job to operate the system of the body. It's like, who's driving the car, ego or higher self? Well, if higher self is, be, is, is in the cosmos constantly working on its next workshop or its next book or its next meditation, then is it actually here to be able to act it out? So one of the key reflections that I want you guys to take a look at is what products have you created based on what you know? You want to know how integrated your higher self is. Look at what you've actually created from what you know. Okay. A lot of you have a wealth of knowledge. A lot of you are more certified than me to do what I'm doing. A lot of you are more, um, more read, more educated, more studied, right? You probably are overflowing with it. And for me, I have always been a doer, which means I take a little bit of information and I see if it works in physical reality. Like I push it into my physical reality and I test the, I test the scientific research of it. It's like, oh, thoughts create things. Let me see if that works here, right? Instead of, oh, thoughts create things, okay? You know, my actions as a method actor will create the character and body that I choose. Okay, let me see if that works. Instead of just obtaining it as knowledge and then running and then putting it into my next workshop or my next Facebook Live, I, want, I don't care about if it works unless it works. And then if it works for me, then I'm overflowing with a workshop. Then I release a new, you know, webinar or whatever. So it's like for me, that's always been the way that I can stay active no matter what changes are happening in physical reality. Like you're not going to see me go into hibernation no matter what, because it's the balance between the spirit and the body that is very much needed in this new world, right? You don't leave your body and go be your spiritual self. You integrate your body into your spiritual self. You heal the ego. You reparent the ego. You reparent the inner child. You make that child feel safe. You make that child feel loved. You remove anxiety. You remove humiliation. You remove fear. You remove doubt. You remove judgment. You remove resentment. You remove grief out of the body. And then what's left? Space. What's, what can we fill up space with? Light. What is light? Information. What are you and your truest form? Your light. Right? So the body can be very dense. Very, very dense with information of the past, which means very solid matter-based information. 
you know, my brother was mean to me, my dad didn't love me, my mommy didn't want me, and these are the stories that are percolating out of your cellular memory, and the blood flowing through your body that is metal is acting as electromagnetic energy to bring a future reality to you so that you can see proof of what you believe. Now, you've had two months, okay? I said it yesterday, hopefully you guys all had a chance to watch my video that I made. And I basically asked everybody to go and break as many laws and rules as you can legally, right? This is a little paradox, but it's like a child. Mommy tells you no, and the child's like, hmm, what is my way around that? That child is not bad. That child is ingenious. That child is creator. That child is motivated by what it wants it needs. And you guys, you want to go to your Mexican restaurant. You want to get on a plane. You want to go see your friends and family. You want to go walk around life. You want to go do the things you want to do. There is no difference between you and a child who is manipulating its way into getting what it wants because it is a creator. That's what I'm asking of all of you. We have gone through the initial fear, which we cleared a lot out. We, we deep dived into our grief. We went into our reset program, and then we went through the Easter energies of the resurrection energy, which is spirit coming back online in a much clearer space, in a much peaceful location, in much more like gentle energy. Remember, ego is very heavy and loud and dominating and must a need, and spirit is very wants and goes with the flow and is peaceful and joy is your natural state. So what you have been doing is either getting you closer to that race or not race, but journey, or it's getting you further away. You know, there's a lot of people that are moving further away from their connection to your, their selves right now. And that's okay because the world is based in duality. There's going to be some people who choose fear and there's going to be some people who choose love. Now, obviously, team love is a lot more fun, right? Everything's way cooler and better, and there's no judgment over there, and you get to be your authentic self, which means that you are actually about to embark in a love journey that you've never experienced before. Imagine being able to be loved the way you love. Has that been one of our greatest heartbreaks as humans, is to have these hearts that are overflowing, and nobody can handle it, and nobody can receive it? And nobody can give back to you what you've given out. So you're literally in grief constantly. And what is grief? Grief is homeless love. Grief is love with nowhere to go. Like when you lose a family member to the other side, your body grieves them because you're now homeless with them. You don't have them as a home. Your heart cannot sync up and connect. It's like a Wi-Fi signal looking for a connection. It doesn't have it. So grief is what, what is at the bottom of our unconsciousness, constantly thinking that everybody is going to abandon us and reject us and leave us. So then we stop loving, we move into a more shallow presentation of attraction, and we date for hair color or eye color or status or academia or, you know, background. And we forget that at the essential level, when children play on the playground, they're looking for playmates who play like they play, not what they look like, not what they have, not what they're doing, but do they play the way that I play? That's what the baseline of attraction is, is like attracts like. But when we close our hearts, we change our level of attraction and we move into a very shallow base idea of love because we have so many walls around our heart. Now I am going to get back to work very heavily now on um, the Vision Quest workshop that I'll be doing with this beautiful man in Australia. I got to connect with him back online. Um, obviously we've been in a quarantine, so you know we got to get back on that. But also I've been able to do a retreat at my home where I've taken people into this deep diving process to find their walls around their heart, walls around their money, walls around their time, walls around their relationships, and walls around their, um, uh, their selves. Right. And then on the next day, we build the 5D path. We build a new world. We, be, we build a treasure hunt. We map it out. And I give everybody the how step by step by step by step. That will be in this big workshop, but it takes time to develop. Okay. 
So that's still coming. Um, I also have had so much wonderful feedback from uh, the happy hour that we did with Lee on the sacred sexuality and the yoni cleanses and all that stuff that her and I have decided to do a online workshop uh, where she's going to take her ancient knowledge of cleaning out the blood and sexuality and um, the sacral energy. And I'm going to go to the future and channel the future of medicine. And so she's going to give three classes, four, three to four classes. I'm going to give three to four classes. So we'll have the ancient techniques. We'll have the futuristic quantum techniques. And her and I will, she'll be in Spain. I'll be here, but we'll be giving you guys a, a six, a six week workshop around sacred sexuality because i'm going to tell you there's a secret to our sexuality and it is about immortality it is about stopping the aging process it is about cleaning out your creative energy so that you can be a match to the, the quantum possibilities versus the things that are lack and hurt and stuck within you because your sacral is a spinning force of the universe and it is creator so when your sacral is blocked sexual guilt shame pain loss then pretty much your root energy can't get past the sacral. And if your sacral energy is blocked, right, then you can't demonstrate it. And if you do demonstrate it, it's it's from wounding. You're demonstrating out of wounding, which means you're attracted to your wounds. You're speaking your wounds. You're collecting your wounds. You're manifesting your wounds. Whatever blockages you have, you're manifesting them in physical reality. And why? Why would you manifest a block in physical reality? So you can see it. Someone's going to trigger the heck out of you based on where your blockage points are. So if I have a blockage around my sexuality or my womanhood or my gender or my power or my creativity or my genius, then I'm going to manifest someone who is going to reject, abandon me, you know, or push my button somehow. And it's a gift because your trigger is your reflection, right? It's showing you where you're blocked. So showing where you're blocked, showing you where you're blocked, showing you where you're blocked. That's what triggers are, right? Now, if the sacral is blocked, what's the messages of the heart? It's going to be all cuckoo. So hopefully over the last couple of months, you have lightened up. I mean, really, that's all we need is everyone needs to just lighten up. And then this becomes an intuitive process that we're kind of already doing that we don't need to take a bunch of workshops for. But you guys, as the leaders of, you know, in the know, the world is waking up. So there's going to be a lot of people who are not going to know what you know right now, who have not been on the journey that you've been on, who have not um, suffered the way that you have. And therefore, they're going to be in a state of gratitude for the knowledge that you do have. So every amount of you becoming your higher self is going to make you um, it's going to develop your purpose, whatever that looks like. Right. You're it's going to activate your purpose. And I know that's what a lot of you want. Like, what am I purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? Well, right now you're supposed to be lightening up. You're supposed to be playing, you're supposed to be preparing, you're supposed to be practicing. Right. You're supposed to be learning you. You're supposed to be clearing you. That's it. Because once the world gets back online, you're going to be like, oh, I could do this and I could do this and I could do this because your North Star is now connected through the heart and coherence of the brain, finally the mind is on board and the ego's like, yeah, let's do that because that sounds awesome. Instead of don't do that because you're gonna get hurt. Because that's usually the story that's been playing out. Let's do that because it's awesome. Don't do that because you're gonna get hurt, okay? Because so-and-so is gonna use you and attack you and judge you and blah. It's the stories are done. So as we return back to ourselves, we get this kind of peaceful energy that returns that helps us remember ourselves, put us back together of who we really are. And you're going, well, who is that? You are joy. You are peace. You are ecstasy. You are genius. You are love. These are your natural states of being. Okay. You are um, empathic. You are compassionate. These are your natural states of being. You are curious. Okay. You are a good listener. These are your natural states of being. So think about your process over the last two minutes, two months. This is really this little class that I have this morning is really about reflection. OK. It's really about taking stock and and really seeing. Who you were when this started. Who were you when all of your freedom was taken away? Who are you when you remembered that nobody can take your freedom because no one can take your heart? No one can take your imagination. Right. No one can take your thoughts. No one can take your feelings without your consent. 
and you started to get back to yourself, right? Can't go out, you gotta go in. So as you've been getting back to yourself, that fire is coming back, that energy is coming back. You may not know what to do with it yet, that doesn't matter. You won't know what to do with it until you activate the frequency of trust. You will not know what you're supposed to do on this planet until you trust yourself. That's what you're working back towards, trusting yourself, which means doing what you say you're gonna do for yourself, honoring you above all other relationships, and knowing that if you have to hurt someone's feels along the way, then that's your gift to them so they can look in their own mirror because it isn't your job to supply everyone's light. You're also, you have to remember that you are not more enlightened than anyone else. Okay, just because someone is choosing a fear path or choosing a, an illness path or choosing a um, unawakened path does not mean that they're more unenlightened than you. And you're probably like, what? They are specifically choosing that path because it's going to mold their journey better for them. This is something you need to really understand. If someone, your spouse, partner, brother, mother is not going as fast as you and you're concerned that they're not going to 5D, let it go. You have your eyes on someone else's paper. They are choosing that experience because it's helping them get momentum to wake up. You cannot pressurize them into waking up. You know what? You are annoying, okay? Because the last thing someone wants to do is be pushed into a process before they give the command. Like they are not ready to activate. They need to suffer a little bit more. They need to go full diagnosis of some crazy illness. They need to get completely broke without you bailing them out. They need to get completely lost in their thoughts without you life coaching for free 24 hours a day. You are slowing them down. So they secretly resent you. Okay. So, wow, this person is really suffering. I love you. Gosh, you're doing great in your suffering. This is gonna just make your wake up and your come up stories so much better because let's, let's, let's reflect, shall we? What was our story like, right? If someone would have taken my story away early on, I would not be sitting here with you with all this passion in my heart. I would have become a professional victim and I would have sucked off of everyone who helped me along the way, and I would have never known myself. That would have been a huge disservice to me. It would also have been a huge disservice on anyone who helped me because they were taking their eyes off their own paper. Now, I'm not talking about general help. I'm talking about saving people, rescuing people, forcing them into wellness, forcing them into their journey, forcing them out of pain, okay? This is where you go, into a dark night and they go into a dark night. The relationship usually becomes very toxic and therefore you are now feeling like you failed, but it was never your journey because what woke you up was your story, your pain, your suffering, and what will move you into the new world is your love, your courage, your honor, your consistency, your behavior is what's going to make or break you. So this is a good time for you guys to have someone help you with your blind spots if you're unsure of where you are the last two months. If you're still making third dimensional decisions. Now, what are third dimensional decisions? Decisions that are based in fear of lack, fear of loss, okay? This is important. Are you making choices right now based in fear of lack, fear of loss, fear of judgment, fear of humiliation, okay? Are you resentful in your relationships? Are you critical of yourself? Are you in any fear of anything that's going on on this planet as it takes place to finally perfect? If so, if any of those honest answers were yes, you're plugged into 3D. So you're probably not getting everything I'm saying right now, and that's okay. This is a DIY class. I don't expect, I don't expect from you guys what I would put into a, a different class. This is a go at your own pace study group, okay? But I want to give you the markers 
and your start and stop points to let you know of the barometer of where you're vibrating because this is how you are vibrating. No one is making you vibrate any other way than you are vibrating. You are taking words and behaviors and deciding if they lower your vibration or if they heighten your vibration. If someone's attitude lowers your vibration or heightens your vibration, it's choice. You may have to change the way you're thinking. You may have to play the duality game with yourself, but it is ultimately your choice and your choice is what's gonna get you to this next space. So where do you need to unplug? Where do you really need to look at your belief systems? Where do you need to lighten up? Where do you need to laugh more? Where do you need to play more? Where do you need to connect with people who are doing better than you, right? We've taught this in Tika before. If you're spending time, if you're constantly the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You need to virtually connect right now with people who are doing better or the same as you so that you can begin to realize what is actually available to you. When you're constantly surrounded by victims and perpetrators, you think that you are the most enlightened person and that you don't really have that many options available to you because that's what your power of influence is showing you. You need to get into a power of influence where you are motivated by your own potential and the potential of other people connecting. Okay, this is really where we're at right now. So if you didn't get a chance to watch uh, my video from last night, I basically teach you guys how to break all the rules of the laws that are in place right now to keep us stuck. And I ask you to go and become a rebellion of this. I ask you to use the force, it's very Star Wars, and step into the power that you have available to you, even if it's just your imagination, because it's time for us to go back to our lives, but go back to our lives and with this new reset heart, this new reset um, lightened version of ourselves, this peace that we're returning with, so that we may go out and now pollinate, this is a good word, pollinate the world with who we are now, okay? So hopefully this helped you guys this morning. I love you all. Um, I am gonna take a little quick vacay next week because the beaches are open and you know my bags are already packed. So I'm going to take a little break next uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, you guys your live Q&A on Wednesday evening instead of Thursday. Um, so I'll make sure you guys have a lot of time to get all your questions answered. And if you haven't watched Method Acting Workshop that is in your classroom, you have to look it up in the archives. I would say this is a great time to refresh in yourself on how to be an instant manifestation, manifestation, manifester with your body. If it does take your body your body's got the blood the blood is the metal the metal is the magnetic energy okay you need your body to manifest all right um other than that have a great weekend um hope you guys break a whole bunch of rules this weekend and i hope you go out and play because even play is an act of rebellion all right guys see you soon